I'll be back straight after church. OK, love. When the kids crawl out of bed, remind them that they're supposed to be cleaning their rooms today. Yeah, all right. I'll see you later. Bye. I'm going into Hotton. I'll be about an hour, OK? Calling in to see Terry on the way? Why would I do that? To make sure he was really helping me last night. Oh, give over. Oh, you can't blame me for asking. You don't seem to believe a word I say anymore. Don't be so touchy. I'm going to the supermarket for a few bits and pieces. I was going to ask if you needed anything. Oh, no, thanks. I'll be back for opening. Hey, you look dead smart. Oh, do I? <laughs> well, I thought I'd try and look the part for Mr Toshiro, seeing as I'm representing the factory. <laughs> What do you think, Kane? Eh? My outfit for our Japanese visitors. <laughs> yeah, you look okay. Oh, don't get carried away. Oh, morning, Francis. Morning. You better brace yourself. I suspect you're in for quite an ordeal. What? The flowers in church. Oh. Lots of people are going to tell you how lovely they are. Prepare to be showered with praise. I'm not going to church. Aren't you? No. Oh, it's a shame. Uh, another time. Oh, you're up early. Yeah, well, I didn't sleep much. Oh. Do you want anything cooked? No, thanks. I was thinking maybe this morning we could go for a ride. Just the three of us. What do you reckon? Yeah, all right. Great. Got work to do. Well, what's so urgent? Chris? Well, it looks like it's just going to be me and you. Is he upset about me seeing Kane? Well, it's a hell of a shock to him, finding out Kane was your dad. Yeah, well, he said I could see him. He hasn't changed his mind, has he? No. Well, what then? You'd just find it easier if we could make up some rules when you can see Kane, that kind of thing. Why do we need rules? Because that's Chris. Look, he's doing his best to get his head round it, but he likes things organised. Yeah, well, as long as he don't try and stop me from seeing him. Well, he won't. Now, come on, eat up, then we'll go for a ride. Well, I don't want him anymore. Why not? Well, because it was meant to be all of us, weren't it? And if Chris ain't coming, then there's no point. This is truly, truly pathetic. What is? Yesterday's takings. According to my calculations, your commission comes to exactly £5.49p. I wasn't expecting much more, to be honest. We should be doing ten times the business this time of year. So why aren't you? Well... Go on. All right. I think you've lost your touch. <laughs> I might have guessed it'd be my fault. No, it's true. You've hardly brought anything in the last couple of weeks. Oh, neither of you. Well, whatever. Blaming each other isn't going to get you anywhere. OK. But if we don't turn things round soon, we're going to be in big trouble. All right, darling. I'll get the message. Oh, hi, Francis. Uh, the door was open. Right, uh, Diane's not here. She's gone shopping in Hotton. She went back for a while. That's all right. It's you I've come to see. Oh. What can I do for you, then? It's about your affair with Ronnie. What? Don't say you're going to deny it. Yeah, well, this is a small village. A lot of people gossip. Oh, no one said anything to me. Then why are you here? You've slept with my husband. Don't make it worse by lying to me. I don't have to sit here and listen to this. Look me in the eye. And tell me it isn't true. Thank you. Look, it was just a fling. A, a little bit of fun. Ask Ronnie, that's all it was. I'm sure. I'm sorry, Francis, I didn't mean to hurt you. Oh, please. I don't want your pity. It's me who feels sorry for you. Do you think this could be an I think it could be. Mr Toshiro? Yes? Uh, Lisa Dingle, Pollard's Fancy Goods. I'd like to welcome you to Emmerdale. Thank you. I'm pleased to meet you. <laughs> uh, this is my stepson, Sam. Hi. Hello. 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 Um, where's Tommy? 
for me. Uh, your son sounds looking forward to meeting him. Oh, I think there's been misunderstanding. Allow me to introduce Tomiko, my daughter. Well, that can't be right. Tommy's a lad's name. Uh, and all them emails, they, they were from a lad, so, so where's he? It's a language. I know it's confusing, but there is no boy called Tommy. We must be. Sorry. You're going to be my mate. Come along, Mr. Toshiro. Let me show you to your accommodation. Thank you. Sammy, get the bags, look. Hey, can I say? I expect you feel you're standing all alone with a spotlight shining on you. Your little secret's been discovered and now you feel guilty and ashamed and don't know what to say to me. No, of course I don't. It's not really a spotlight matter. More a 60-watt bulb. What do you mean? It's no great achievement, bedding Ronnie. You're not the first bit of stuff he's had. In fact, you're not even the first Louise. Although your namesake was a bit classier. She was a PA, I think. Don't understand. To be honest, when I realised it was you, I was a bit surprised. You've got a nice smile and a good figure. But pulling a barmaid, oh, it's not very imaginative, is it? Still, he is getting older. Would you like one? Hiya. All right. What are you up to? Not a lot. Mm, me neither. I was gonna go riding. So why didn't you? Are they still giving you an hard time about seeing me? Well, my mum's all right, but she says Chris needs it sorting when I can see her. Do you think you can do something about it? Maybe. I'm going to take your rabbit in and fish in. And we're going to go to the pub and play darts. And feed the pigs and collect the eggs from my chickens. You must excuse the Tomiko. She doesn't speak English. But she, she sent all them emails. And she sounded like a lad. That's because my son wrote them. I'm sorry, this must be very confusing for you. It's not fair. I can't be mates with a girl, can I? Oh, Mr Turner, I'll be down in a minute to show you to your rooms. Don't feel you have to stay. We can introduce ourselves. Are you sure? Yes, of course. Right, then, well, we'll be back later to see how you're settling in. Come along, Sam. Oh, um, I've just remembered. Stella, uh, where is she? Oh, it's Tortoise. Uh, got accidentally shipped to Japan. We couldn't bring her. Red tape, you understand? So I'm never going to see her again? I'm sorry, love, but it's probably for the best. The journey wouldn't have done her any good. <laughs> it's happened a few times since we got married, and it's always the same. He strays, I find out, and it stops, dead. What kind of marriage is that? Oh, one that's lasted for 25 years, more than you've been able to manage. Yeah, well, I tried that once, never again. Oh, I see. You can't hang on to your own man, so you steal someone else's. I wasn't trying to steal him. Do you ever think where you'll be 15 years from now? I don't know. You'll be behind that bar, wearing a false smile and an extra layer of slap. Still trying to charm the punters. But I doubt there'll be any takers. Me? I'll be celebrating my ruby wedding. Yeah, all right, that's enough. Oh, don't worry. I'm going. But just remember, it ends here, now. <laughs> Wash your hands, you can go and set the table. Okay. Don't stand there like a spare part. Put that lot in the bin and give your room a vac. Eh? A vac? Oh, it's
It's a wonderful invention. It makes a lot of noise and it sucks up dust. Mm, you know what they say about sarcasm, don't you, eh? There's something your mother's very good at, so don't bother arguing. And, Ronnie, choose a bottle of wine. Um, a pint of bitter, uh, two glasses of white wine and an orange juice, please. Louise? What? Oh, it's OK, Ashley. I'll get them. Sit down, I'll bring them over. Oh, thanks. What is the matter with you? If it's about Terry, I've got no intention of checking up on you. Couldn't care less. Then what? With a face like that, you'll turn the customers away. Louise, tell me. Frances came to see me this morning. Frances? Oh, so she knows. She was vile. Well, don't expect any sympathy. She must be going through hell. I don't think so. Did you tell her you'd already finished it? You did finish it? So you lied to me. I meant to finish it. No, you didn't. You're lying again. It doesn't matter now, does it? Oh, yes, it does. I thought we were friends. You can't make me feel any worse than I already do. I'll have a damn good try. You've betrayed me. No, I haven't. You promised you'd end it, and you didn't mean a word of it. You stood there and you lied to me. And do you know what really gets me? What? I was thinking about Francis. Yes, of course I was. I didn't want you wrecking a marriage. But most of all, I was thinking about you, trying to protect you. I thought you might get hurt. Well, what else can I say? I'm sorry. I don't believe you. I don't think I'll ever believe you again. All right, if I join you. Uh, yeah, of course. I came in to tell you about my bright idea. Hmm. What's that? I reckon we should have a valuation day at the barn. People bring in their bits and bobs, and we tell them how much they're worth free of charge. Didn't you listen to a word I said this morning? We are strapped for cash. Exactly. I mean, we're bound to come across one or two gems. We buy them cheap, we sell them on, we make a couple of bob. Well, it sounds good to me. Thank you, darling. <sighs> oh, come on, Rodney. What have you got to lose? There's no point flouncing out and pretending you're the injured party, cos you're not. So you don't even want to hear what she said? No, I don't, cos I reckon you deserved every word. I told you it'd end in folks getting hurt. It always does. Tell me, Diane, does it get lonely up there on the moral high ground? I know what Francis is going through. It's happened to me, remember, lots of times, and it's horrible. Well, maybe it was for you. Meaning? Meaning you don't know anything about her? Maybe not, but I thought I knew you. After Bernice left, we were so close. I cared for you. I tried to help you when Ray died and you were in bits, remember? That's right, pile it on. Emotional blackmail, don't give me a chance. Why should I? After what you've done. I don't know you at all, do I? You're a cheat. You're a liar. And you're very good at it. You had me fooled. I'm gonna go into the village if that's all right. What for? Stand on street corners. Mean. <laughs> Generally lower the tone of the place. Comedian. I'll come with you. I don't think so. Why not? Because you've got your room to tidy. She can do it when she gets back. That's not fair. Ali, go. Only take me ten minutes anyway. Don't live in squalor like you. Ooh, practising for when you're a non, are you? Bog off. <laughs> Shall we take this through to the lounge to finish it off? No. Take it upstairs? I don't think so. Right, I'll go through then. Thanks for the meal. I'll clear up later. I told her she wasn't your first Louise. But I reckon she's your first Australian. Am I right? We've had second thoughts about the valuation day. You mean it's not going to happen? Oh, of course it's going to happen. But we thought we'd hold it at the cafe. The cafe? Well, that way, people can have a drink and a bite to eat while they're waiting. And Viv's hardly going to object, is she? Well, it's going to be good for her business. Yeah, well, I'm more concerned about my business, actually. Oh, we need to get moving on publicity and let people know what's happening. Oh, well, I thought I'd leave that to you, darling. I'll get on to it. Uh, 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 uh. OK, 
Keep an eye on costs. Yeah, of course I will. Relax, Rodney. It's going to be fabulous. <laughs> Remember why we moved here? Yeah. You promised. You swore to me that you were going to put all that behind you. I know. And I believed you. I thought this time, new house, your new job, no ghosts rattling round the place. And what do you do? I'm sorry. Remember how bad things were? So bad, I couldn't tell you I might have breast cancer. For God's sake, Ronnie. I never meant it to happen. I still don't know why it did. You walk into a pub and you see a big smile and a low-cut top. And, well, what's a man to do? You stand at the bar, fix your eyes on a cleavage, dribble into your pint and come out with God knows what rubbish. And she's stupid enough to fall for it. It's pathetic. Do you know what it makes you look like? Well, like I said, pathetic. But she meant nothing to me. None of them did. I hate myself for doing it. It's only been four months since your last sordid little fling. In the past, you've left it for years. So tell me, what was the point of coming here? I meant everything I said when we decided to move. I want a new life. You, me, the kids. You know how much they matter to me. Oh, you can't use them as an excuse anymore. You might have been able to when they were little, but they'd get by without you now. I don't want that, and neither do you. We're a good family. We need to stay together. But it's all been built on a lie. And I'm sick and tired of pretending and covering for you. Please, Fran, give me one more chance. One last chance, I swear. I've heard it all before. Every lying word. You're the only woman I've ever loved. Don't you realise how hollow that sounds? I can't imagine life without you, I can't. Well, maybe you should get used to the idea. You don't mean that. Oh, don't I? Please, Fran, don't push me away. I beg you. Give me one more chance, it won't happen again. <laughs> I promise. <gasps> Don't you touch me! Get out of the house! Get out! Okay. Get out now! A visitor. What do you want? We need to get a few things straight, you and me. You can't just walk in here when you feel like it. Oh, you can't make her life a misery. Don't be ridiculous. Well, going on about me. It upsets her. Oh, what's this? Paternal instincts? If she wants to see me, she can. You don't dictate terms to me. Well, that works both ways. Don't waste my time. Get out. Chris! Look, we've got to talk about it, Chris. At he... least sort some out. He's taking... No, he is not. I'm not going away. You understand? Well, I'll check my diary and give you a call. OK? Make sure you do. And soon. I'll see you out. Well, he certainly knows how to wind you up, doesn't he? He can do what he likes. He's not going to get the better of me. I promise you. Please, Fran, let me in. Let's talk about it. I need you and the kids. You're my life. Nothing else matters. With the others, it, it's just a game. It's stupid. Meaningless. I'm just trying to prove something. All I ever wanted to be were a good husband, a, a good dad. You know that, don't you? Fran, I love you. I'll do anything. Look, we've... We've built something special. Don't let's just throw it away. If I lose you, I couldn't bear it. Please, Fran, talk to me. Please. Please. Thanks, love.
Oh, Mr Turner said we'd find you here. I hope you settled in all right. Yeah, thank you. I must say, I'm looking forward to visiting your factory tomorrow. Oh, well, I hope we live up to your expectations. I don't see why not. You are exactly the sort of company I like to do business with. Oh, good, really? <laughs> yes. Family is very important to me. And you are a traditional English family business. Yes. That helps you produce a quality product. Handcrafted, authentic items, not mass-produced rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about my daughter. Oh, it must be difficult for her not speaking English, and she must be tired. That's true. But she didn't really want to come in the first place. Oh? I'd like her to take over the running of the business one day. But so far, she's shown absolutely no interest in doing so. I'm hoping this visit might infuse her. Well, we'll have to see what we can do, won't we, Sammy? Right? Where's Dad going? Work. He never said. He got a call. Where's he going? Instead of all these questions, why don't you go up and do your room? All right, don't get stressed. So, when's he getting back, then? I'm not sure. Is he going back to France? Did you go out like that? Yeah, he saw me go. I thought you'd have put a jacket on. I'm fine. Get in the house before you catch your death of cold. Okay, go on. OK, OK. 